Today is a date that will figure prominently in Canadian history, March 12th, 2014, the day Canada's mission in Afghanistan officially came to an end. In Kabul, the last Canadian soldier still on the ground in Afghanistan watched the flag lowered for the last time. Our chief political correspondent Tom Clark was also there for the historic ceremony. Tom? Thank you, Robin. Canada's war in Afghanistan is over. It happened in quiet Canadian fashion at a simple but at times moving ceremony at the International Military Headquarters here in Kabul. While the ceremony itself lasted less than an hour, it brought to an end a remarkable chapter in Canadian history. Great attention! For 12 years, the Canadian flag has flown over Afghanistan. In that time, more than 40,000 Canadian troops came here to fight Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, and to try to bring this country into the 21st century. The cost? The lives of 158 soldiers, three civilians, and injuries, both physical and mental, for hundreds of troops who served here. To paraphrase the words of our Canada's greatest general, Sir Arthur Currie, to those who have fallen, I say, you have not died but stepped into immortality. Canadians didn't just fight here. They trained Afghans how to defend their own country, and they taught the new police force how to police. Canada distinguished itself here, and there's a strong sense among many that we are leaving before the job is done, something that was hinted at in today's ceremony. We here will regret that we will no longer see the famous maple leaf adorn our bases and on the uniforms of troops. The end of Canada's war will mean changes for the armed forces. The government has already signaled massive budget cuts ahead. I think to a certain extent that's already happened. Uh, some of that uh, credit has, uh, has been taken as uh, the government has dealt with, uh, uh, as so many governments have dealt with uh, uh, budget crunches all around. After 12 years of blood and treasure, of courage and sacrifice, the Maple Leaf no longer flies in the joint military compound. The achievements were substantial, the cost was heavy, and the final outcome uncertain. Right this, missed. But this mission transformed not only the Canadian forces into a battle-hardened group, but in many ways transformed a country which found a new pride in our place in the world and pride in the people who took us there. In a final irony, the country that led us to Afghanistan was the one that provided us the means to leave. American helicopters took the last of the Canadian soldiers and with battle-hardened precision, the last Canadian boot left the ground. Well, what the soldiers didn't see, couldn't see, was a moving tribute to them that stretched from coast to coast. This morning, at many schools across the country, the Canadian flag was lowered, just as it was in Kabul. It was in tribute to the dead and wounded of the war. And nowhere were these ceremonies more keenly watched or anticipated than among those who had served here and their families. It brought to a close the memories of courage and of loss. For the past few days, Global's Francis Silvaggio has been talking with many of them. Here's what he found. Canada joined the hunt for the Taliban in February 2002. Soldiers knew the risks and the country would find out shortly. April 18th, 2002, four Canadians were killed in a friendly fire incident, our first casualties in a combat role since Korea. Sergeant Lauren Ford was section commander that day, and while he lost his right eye in the incident, he's never lost sight of why he stepped up to go in the first place. It's what soldiers do. So um, I'm very proud of what we accomplished over there. They tell move over to the side. In the face of tragedy, accomplishments can be difficult to measure. Progress in Afghanistan is slow and tedious by even the most generous ruler. But after returning to Kabul in 2013, eight years after his first tour, Master Warrant Officer Don Cormier is optimistic. The economy, the government, the security, the children, the schools, it's all plain to see. Um, there has been many successes and, and that's what we should focus on. Start moving. 
The successes are a direct reflection of much of the work done by Canadian soldiers. As the mission comes to an end, Lieutenant Colonel Nick Grimshaw is confident the country is a better place than when he first arrived in 2006. We have helped Afghanistan and the people of Afghanistan uh, get back on their feet to a large extent, and now it's very much up to them uh, to carry this forward, and, and, and uh, the future will be written by Afghans. That future remains uncertain, a reality that soldiers struggle with as they say goodbye for good. I'm leaving this place for you know, the amazing country I live in, Canada, where I'm safe. I have an amazing quality of life, so there is some guilt. Afghanistan will forever be burned into the minds of Canadians, soldiers and civilians alike. Sergeant Ford says it hurts to remember some of what happened, but it would hurt even more to forget. I hope they remember The, the troops that didn't come back, but ultimately I want them to remember that we did a very good thing over in Afghanistan. Francis Salvaggio, Global News, Edmonton. Well, many questions remain on this last day of the Canadian mission in Afghanistan. Was it worth it? Did the Allied forces truly win the war and can they win the peace? And did we leave too early? All of these will be studied in the years ahead, but what's not in question is that through our military, Canada made a real difference here. Our soldiers gave us a place back at the international table. Canada mattered again. The challenge for the civilian forces now is to keep us there. Robin? Tom Clark in Kabul, Afghanistan. Thanks, Tom. For more analysis on the cost of Canada's mission in the war-torn nation, go to globalnews.ca.